For centuries, the Lutheran Church has been known as the Singing Church. Garrison Keillor comments on how little Lutherans for years and years learned to sing their parts by sitting on the laps of people who were singing their parts and having their ear against the chest of the person who was singing. But we have lost some of that over the years because of our insipid cowering to our culture. In an effort to be contemporary, many of our churches only hear an off-key soprano wailing a melody into a mic accompanied by a spotlight and the thrum of electric strings and pounding drums. Yes, I have been to many, many contemporary worship services, and almost all of them are hideous. People do not even take the time to ask, what is contemporary about singing a song that was written 30 years ago? We almost lost our liturgical heritage in this church because of our own stupidity and arrogance. It is a, a great sadness that we lived through, but it does seem to be turning ever so slowly. Many of you gave me copies of the article that was in the Tribune last spring, written by a millennial, someone in their 20s, who explained why she had no need for church to be cool. Uh, in fact, she and many of her contemporaries are looking for something that is not so contemporary, something that is bigger than whatever is contemporary. See, church should not be like the latest tattoo or the new cool belly button ring. If you're an adult, you know that all of us go through fads in our lives. We all live through the fads of our times. Some of us caved into them, some of us didn't, but whatever we did, hopefully we grow out of them. See, the church transcends the fads of any one time. And one of the ways that we have transcended for 3,000 years is through our song. In our Old Testament today, we have poetry, lyrics, song from Zechariah, or Zephaniah. And he writes this poem to encourage us to sing. And about what are we to sing? Well, part of what he says is from the Lord. He says, behold, at that time I will deal with all your oppressors. I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you in, at that time when I gather you together, for I will make you renowned and praised among the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. That's a powerful lyric. It's not about how I feel about my life. It's not about some pious statement about what great things I'd like to do. It's not even about how I feel about God, and it's certainly not a cool rhyme set to a hip beat with lots of bass and drums. It's a poem about God, specifically his promise to rescue us from all of the trouble and from all of the trials on this earth. His promise to send his son to die for us and to restore us as his people, holy and righteous before him. This is the song that God gives us to sing, to sing right alongside the angels that the world may know that people who are far off, people who 
feel unloved and unknown might hear this rich, beautiful gospel melody sung aloud by God's people. Zephaniah wrote this very contemporary lyric 2,600 years ago. And it is every bit as contemporary today as it was the day it was written. That's why we sing in this church. Music is the handmaiden to the message. Music forms pathways in our brains and creates seed beds where faith will grow. When you hear this tune, what do you think? Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. Handel's amazing music carries the text of our salvation for every single one of us. No word needs to be spoken. We know what it means. When you hear this tune, what do you think? Bum, 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 bum. For over 500 years, Luther's amazing tune has carried the church militant forward in a march. And God loves to hear our song. But not just any song. Not some insipid song about how we feel about things. God loves to hear our song about our salvation that he has given us. See, the point of church music is not to fill time so the preacher has a break between reading the gospel and preaching the sermon. We have church music to proclaim the gospel in a different way. Because we have words, we have pictures, we have colors, we have smells, we have tastes, we have textures, and we have music. And it all works together to carry the message of salvation. We sing loud. And we sing strong. We sing the song of the church. And that is why we have survived the latest silliness. And as we boomers discover that our fad was just a fad after all, we learn that the theology of God is just too rich and too complex to be encased in three chords played on a six-string instrument. Even an entire symphony can't capture the majesty of God, but it certainly does a better job of delivering it. The song of the church is rich harmony and complex instrumentation, and it goes on and on, and we get better and better at it, and we learn more and more about it until the day that you and I get to sing in the choir immortal. So when you gather here, open those hymnals and sing. Let the words of those texts sweep over you and transcend you above the mundane, Above the thoughts of, of grades and, and, and bills and carpets that need vacuuming. Abandon all of those contemporary things in your life for the music. And let the church's music lift you high up. High enough to glimpse ever so briefly your eternal home with God. That's what gives us comfort. That's what gives us peace in these contemporary struggles that we all have in this sin-fallen world.